I am at an impasse. I am currently here. Question is, where do I want to go? Hello adventurers and welcome back to my channel. Today we're on an adventure and trying to figure out exactly where we're going. The bigger picture, if I go north, I go up to Taylor Park. And if I go south, I go toward Gunnison. And so, which way do I want to go? What do I want to get into? I don't know. What I do know is that next to this big sign, there is a beautiful body of water over here. And then there's like some picnic tables and things, but that's kind of overgrown. So that's probably not in my wheelhouse, but it is warmer here in the valley area. So I need to make a choice. Past Taylor Park, I think I go to Crested Butte. I don't know what the camping situation is there, or I could go with something that is in my wheelhouse that I've been wanting to do. It's a little bit of a drive though. Hmm. I don't know. Should I do it? Maybe. What I do know is the last decision that I made uh, took me on some dirt roads. It was fun, but uh, the van's a little nasty now. By a little, I mean a lot. Definitely warmer in the van at this level though. That's pretty warm right now. Okay, so I looked and I'm about five hours and 30 minutes away from the place I would like to go because they are doing construction. So, normally it would be faster for me to go south toward Gunnison. However, because of the construction, it's actually easier for me to go north to Cresta Butte. Okay, cool. For now, this is what our path is looking like. We have a couple cars in front of us and I'm just gonna enjoy the ride with some music. I'm super confused as to which way I'm going, but my map is telling me I'm going in the fastest direction. However, some of the signage, super confusing around here because originally my map had told me I was gonna go toward Cresta Butte, but then it told me I'm going toward Gunnison. I don't know where we're gonna end up today, guys. I realistically don't. And this is the pro and con of using the map, but I also have an offline map downloaded just in case. So we'll see what happens. <laughs> it could be a little bit wild, but I am willing to risk it for the biscuit and find some adventure. And in the meantime, this view is everything. I mean, how could you not love this view? Lots of people out here recreating today. Lots of people out on the lake, which is to the right. And lots of national forest land. Ooh, ooh, a scenic pull off. Yes, thank you, I think I will. Look guys, we're in the Gunnison National Forest now and there's some info here about all of the different peaks we can see in front of us. So it looks like the one right here is called Grizzly Peak and it's 13,281 feet. And there's actually one over here that's a little bit taller and that's called Ice Mountain and its elevation is 13,951. Apparently right here we're at 9,500 feet of elevation and this is Taylor Park behind me. Taylor Park is a wide vast basin area and you can see meadows as well as a big lake out there that people are recreating on. It is beautiful and with the sun today and the beautiful clouds it makes for the most epic day here in Colorado. wildflowers everywhere and we are actually close to Crested Butte which is known as the wildflower capital and I can see why there are gorgeous flowers all in this area and it's not even wildflower season yet they're a little early still whenever I'm visiting Back on the road we go toward wherever the map <laughs> thinks that we need to go. The more that I drive along, the more that I'm finding interesting things, even though I still don't know exactly where I'm going. So I pulled off on this little roadside stop that is the Taylor Park Dam. And the Taylor Park Dam is gushing right now. I was able to see the lake on the other side as I came kind of down the hill from where I was, and it was beautiful. 
But this, this is epic. In fact, here is another sign of the Taylor Park Dam. And it says, before you lies the massive earth fill Taylor Park Dam. And this dam is located on the Taylor River, which is a tributary of the Gunnison River. Now also on this sign, you can see some of the original construction. And I really like that they've allowed us to have a glimpse into history this way. I know we're talking about the dam, but does anybody get those Final Destination vibes? When you see a truck hauling the timber, the lumber, the big trees? I do, I do. Show of hands, show of hands in the comments. The dam before us was built by the Bureau of Reclamation and it started construction in 1935. The dam backs up 106,200 acre feet of water or 2,040 surface acres into the Taylor Reservoir. The dam itself is 206 feet and has a base of 1,000 feet and a crest of 675 feet. And it took over 300 men working construction from 1935 to 1937 during the winter months also when it was up to negative 40 degrees Fahrenheit. You know, on days like today when we're just out exploring, absolutely free, take a pull off, see a sign, learn some cool things. I also hear something interesting in this direction, but I can't see anything. It sounds as though I can hear water. But to my knowledge, there's no water in that direction. It just looks like this. So like in this direction, it sounds like gushing water, but all I see is just some leaking coming off the side of the mountain itself. You know, guys, I always say you'll never know until you go. Same thing for roadside pull-offs. You'll never know unless you stop. And I'm thoroughly enjoying this day of not knowing where I'm going exactly. Some days are just best whenever you just let the road take you on the journey. Okay, I've been meandering for a bit around the twisty roads and I found a pull-off that's actually, I think I put in for kayaks, but they have a toilet. More importantly though, they have this view. Now there is a trail in this direction. It's very small. It leads us down to the bottom. Oh, little bumps. I have to feel, I have to feel, is it cold? I bet it is, it's all snow melt. Oh, that is chilly. Feels good. And this is why you stop. Every time, this is why you stop. Colorado just keeps on giving and giving and giving. But now up I go again. My goal is just to have an incredible adventure path. An adventure path is whatever that you're getting into that's an activity that is something that gets you moving, that fulfills that sense of wonder, that brings you joy. Wow, my adventure path today is epic. getting some water that was awesome that was so awesome even if I don't make it to the place I wanted to today I'm happy I'm super super happy right now I am currently climbing and climbing some more 
is rerouted because of a road closure. Hmm. Okay, so so far it's not bad. Um, at the same time, this is not a paved road. This is a dirt road. So it told me that I needed to go about three miles on this road to get to the highway. The last time that it took me on a weird road in Colorado, I ended up having to turn around because it got real sketchy. So far, this one seems okay. I mean, it is really pretty. And there's some offshoots of different kinds of activities, including like hiking. And I think there's a all wheel drive kind of driving route in that direction. I will say this, it's very warm here in comparison to the other places I've been. So I must be considerably lower in altitude. I have returned to pavement, but along the way I saw those cows and there was a rancher who was out there and he had his little, his little golf cart looking mule thing out. And he had this big fluffy dog and I was like, oh, I don't, I don't want to dust him because it was really dusty there. So I slowed down only to realize they were trying to wrangle a calf that had gone rogue. It was the cutest little thing. Of course, I wasn't going to film the rancher because that would be super weird, but I filmed the other cows because they were super cute. They were just cooling off. It's kind of a hot day today. I love this. This is amazing. <laughs> Buddy, how are you? Oh, we're getting close to the mountains again. Like the big snow-capped ones. Oh, are we gonna go back through them again? That would be epic. And if you don't know what I mean by again, go check out my Cottonwood Pass video. I did that one and oh my gosh. I got to throw a snowball. <laughs> I was so excited. It brought so much joy to this little Texan's heart. <laughs> I literally feel like I'm on top of the world here. This is amazing. Wow. I am in Crested Butte. The sign earlier said Gunnison. Okay, I'm, I'm real confused now, but I'm glad that I'm on the path I was supposed to be. And it makes so much more sense as to why it's this beautiful. I know a lot of people who go skiing in Crested Butte and always talk about how amazing it is. So I've never been here. I don't know that I'm gonna stick around because I have someplace else that I'm gonna go, but I definitely am gonna come back. And I've already been texting my friends, hey, 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 hey. Um, Next summer, I have a plan for us. I mean, how could you not love a town that looks like this? Ooh, it's pretty. Now say I dipped a toe in Crested Butte. I'm at 8,885 feet of elevation here, apparently. Um, do you see that thing up there? I, I, yeah, I'm definitely coming back. I need to find out what all these things are to do here. Okay, so after I went through Crested Butte, it told me I needed to go to the Keepler Pass, I think is how it's pronounced. So I am now on another pass today. Second one of my day, other ones in another video. I'm not gonna make a dedicated video for this one. I'm just gonna continue this video and just kind of show you, but I need to come back here because I saw a sign that says this is the wildflower capital and that this pass is where you can see the vast majority of them just a little bit later in the season than I am here. But I'm gonna do this, I'm excited. I'm also a little nervous because like, I don't know how long this pass is. I, I have plenty of gas, I'm fine. But this is gonna be a long windy mountain pass. I think I'm just gonna soak in the views more than anything and then make this one that I come back to to really deep dive into because that's kind of kind of my vibe for today.
Okay, portions of this road have been interesting, we'll say, but I've been kind of navigating around. I pulled off because I had a really big pothole, so I wanted to check out my van. It's okay, we survived. Well, I am only about a mile from the turn and I ended up at this. Okay, cool, cool. I had a great time over the pass. Everything was so beautiful. The views were spectacular. And I ended up meeting a couple cool people at a different set of like pull-offs. One was somebody who actually used to be from Texas. The other one was Mary. She's from Florida and she watches the channel. So that's really cool. Hi, Mary. Making my dinner right now. It's been a long day, but the air fryer is perfect for long days because it doesn't take very long. I figured after today, I've had a really long day and I'm just a little bit tired. So I'm making some sausages and some mashed potatoes. And then tomorrow I've got some exciting adventures planned because now I'm closer. I kept this a little bit secret though. So you will see where I ended up tomorrow. But for now, remember we're not here for a long time, but we are here for a good time. I'm gonna get to making my dinner and I'll see you next time. Bye.